Auzubillahiminashshaitwanirrajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum Ji ayanu Pakhaira agale Ni hao Chuna shumme Washmale Oh hi Gunzaimis Guten Morgen Ola Bonjour Priviet Kaifa hal Hale shumma chatore Ahlan wasalan Marhaba Buna Mucho gracias Swabi Abhalli kere aya Hosh gyal din And I was hi And thank you very much everybody For tuning into PTP World You're certainly watching World this morning Alongside my very well learned colleague Who happens to be Miss Haja Sati I happen to be Shahzad Hassan Khan and it happens to be Friday away in Islamabad. The temperatures have actually dropped to 20 degrees centigrade and everybody can feel the chill. But first things first, hello Haja, how are you doing today? Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much for introducing me Shahzad. So it's Juma, Juma Mubarak to you yeah, and Mubarak. everyone out there. So I really wanted to discuss some Islamic concept and how it dismantled the concept of racism, right? Sure. And how racism is a modern day evil that is still stalking the global society. So just imagine Hazrat Bilal Habsha who happens to be from the modern day Ethiopia. Yep. Uh, he was a companion of Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu yeah. Alaihi Wasallam. And Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also felt that his, his footsteps were way before him in the heaven, right? True. So imagine his status there that, you know, the Holy Prophet is that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most beloved of the human being and was most cherished by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And he hears that his footsteps were preceded by Hazrat Bilal Habsha, right? So this is the status and this is the concept that Islam of the racism which Islam dismantled and Islam said that the only criteria of piety is the criteria which endears us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Yeah. And then uh, what we did was that the modern day uh, enlightenment came on and this uh, colonization went on and then the slavery went on and the racism was very inherently attached to modern societies and it is still very prevalent there. And I really wanted to invoke once again the Islamic principles which very brilliantly dismantle this concept and um, maintain piety as the criteria, and obviously, ultimately. Criteria. And obviously, you know, uh, what Quran actually tells us is that right. kisi arbi ko ajmi par fazilat hasil nahi and likewise as well. So right. ladies and gentlemen, why are we even talking about it? There's a reason. So imagine when we actually talk about the modern day Ethiopia, ladies and gentlemen, imagine that they have the fastest growing economy as of today and it wasn't very long ago that they kind of started to contribute towards their economy but they turned around the tables for themselves and for the people of Ethiopia or Africa for that matter mm -hmm. and that too in the just last one year you know so this is something which we really need to learn from not just that if we talk about um, you know for all of those uh, that global mm -hmm. catastrophe you know, or the uh, global change, communities right. which have been adding to the climate change ladies and gentlemen imagine that in the last four years They've actually planted 24 billion seedlings and that's quite a lot. We've spoken about the coffee already, that they are the best producers of the best coffee all over the world and people are in love with it. And we're lucky enough that today we actually got ourselves the Ethiopian coffee. But not just that. I think when we talk about the human resource, when we talk about the natural resources, all we need to do is that bring in some, uh, some policy intervention and then things will work around. Now for country like Pakistan or a country like Ethiopia where the Western media has always been projecting a negative image. Okay. I think that it's, it's the best case scenario for the country of uh, Pakistan or Ethiopia to kind of come together, join hands and kind of do something about it. Alhamdulillah, we've been able to do that too. And Alhamdulillah, Ethiopia has been able to do that too. So the very first ambassador who came down to Pakistan as the ambassador of Ethiopia, ladies and gentlemen, was here right. as soon as he landed in Pakistan. And we are very glad and we are very grateful and we are honored that he kind of graced the occasion with his presence. But even today, ladies and gentlemen, to ask about whether how has been his journey so far, because it's been more than one and a half month that he was here last time, and he was relatively very fresh in Pakistan. But now, ladies and gentlemen, there's quite a lot the Ethiopian embassy and the Ethiopian people have done for Pakistan, even when we talk about the flood relief activities. So before I say everything, I think it's about time that we introduce our honorable guest. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody whom we and the world actually refers to His Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. He happens to be the Ethiopian ambassador to Pakistan. He is Mr. Jamal Bakr Abdullah. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you? Assalamu alaikum, salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Juma Mubarak. Juma Mubarak, Khair Mubarak, Your Excellency, thank you very much once again. And whenever you come on to our set, you know, there's this rejuvenating energy which we feel. And thank you very much for gracing the occasion once again. Look, uh, gentlemen, uh, w this pleasure is mine. We are working together for collective interest of our national uh, interest. Alhamdulillah. And so we need to project our forces, our, you know, powers in the globe. We are very ancient, civilized, uh, you know, countries. True. Where, you know, in these civilizations, Ethiopia's civilizations goes beyond history. 
We have such a big you know, history, so we need to work together, come together, share our experience so that it can fill our gaps, help us to move forward to the high level. Inshallah. And that's, that's what we are aiming for. That's what the people of Ethiopia are aiming for, which is why we are here too as well. But sir, when the last time you were here, it was, it was very recent that you've actually just landed in Pakistan. So first of all, I would certainly want to know which places have you been to? You've been to Karachi. I could see that you were meeting the chief minister and the governor. You know, so how was it for you? How's been the you know last 30 or 40 days since the last time you were here on the program, Your Excellency? Really, thank you very much. You know, remember one thing I said when I came to this place. Sir. I said Pakistanis are very heroic people. Exactly. Second, they are very hospitable people. Exactly. Warm welcoming. Wherever I go, they give me flour. <laughs> they give me their hair. They give me everything they have. True. You know, that is very exceptional. I have been in different parts of the globe, and this basically, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed, the nature, the values, the belief of this Alhamdulillah. nation. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. So I went down, as, actually, as you said, I came here, I meet with different officials, yep. starting with, uh, you know, uh, His Excellency the President, President yes. the ministers, many ministers, then secretaries. You know, I've seen the values truly throw them, the true values of Pakistani. I'm very proud of them, and it is going to be a long journey we started together. Inshallah, and that's what Wonderful. we look forward to. And, you know, in addition to that, obviously, at that time when you just landed in Pakistan, you know, we have been going through a catastrophe, which obviously the international community is trying to address, and that too in, uh, in terms of climate change. We, the people of Ethiopia and the government of Ethiopia has actually undertaken quite a lot of flood relief activities for the people of Pakistan. So would you want to shed some light on that as well because we do have pictures whether how the people and the government of Ethiopia has been working for the relief of the people who've been struck by such a natural calamity. Thank you, brother. One thing I was very touched. Remember when I said two things happening in this country, inflation, which is the economy that we share with other countries. Second is the flood, which is exceptional to this nation. I was touched and I've seen people are displaced and with you know the cause they are minimal to the contributions, True. as you know, the Prime Minister say below one. So this kind of contribution, they are suffering the cause, the international community part of it. And, uh, you know, we have seen all the houses have been destroyed. 1.7 million houses has been destroyed. More than 1,600 life has been lost. True. You know, 73,000 of women are giving birth in tents. Imagine how it is horrible. True. And the schools, you know, healthy facilities, all have been destroyed. And this is big nations. Actually, the government is doing all it can. But True. the magnitude, True. the intensity of the calamity, it was beyond everyone's imaginations. You know, when I was thinking, I tried to visualize what is going to happen to this nation. And I couldn't able to sit here. And I better said, Jamal, go to the field True. and see what is really on the ground. Exactly. And uh, during that visit, one thing I've realized, before I go, I have met on my way to his, his Excellency, the Chief Minister of Sindh, because Sindh, as you know, it is one of the highly, you know, affected by the flood. True. Ninety percent of the, you know, the state True. has been in, inundated in water. So I talk, I met with him, and I have discussed, and I'm very grateful for his, you know, uh, energetic and the way he is handling the case, managing if it is all those things I really appreciate, and the, he informed me. A lot of things are happening, and the worst is coming unless we come together. True. So that thing, then from there I also met with the governor, who was the first in a word. The first, he, he, he met me. After he took The first yes. to be hosted. I'm very lucky that I've been hosted by him. So we discussed a lot of issues on bilateral, regional, you know, what we have to do as a nation to work together. Right. Right. So, Mr. Ambassador, I really wanted to ask you something, especially when it comes to our cooperation on the um, spiritual level and on the cultural level. So, Pakistan and Ethiopia both are Muslim countries. Of course, Ethiopian is a multicultural society. They have other ethnicities too, right? But um, it is a cradle of the civilization because last time you came here, we talked about the Lucy, which is the oldest preserved skeleton in the world. Yeah. And it reminds us of how we humans are all one big family, mm -hmm. right? So I really wanted to ask you, so for example, uh, there are a lot of comments coming on. So for example, European Union Chief Joseph Borrell said that 
um, the, the European Union is sort of the Europe is a for garden and the rest of the uh, world is a forest, right? And he has been under a lot of criticism. True. So we see this sort of mentality of white man burden and of the very Eurocentric version which is prevalent here. But we, Pakistan and Ethiopia, we're both um, Islamic sort of a country and we have Islamic ideals and how can we cooperate as Islamic countries, a voice of the third world globalized um, a country or the uh, vision when it comes to that and uh, counter these sort of narratives. Look, uh, thank you very much. This is a very serious case, True. by the way. Nowadays, you know, countries like my country, who is multicultural, multi-religious, and people are living in harmony. True. You know, nobody in theirs, you know, as you said, you raised it about Bilal al right. who was, you know, during ancient times, <laughs> the racism that comes now, this is, you know, xenophobia, Islamophobia, True. You know, developing countries undermining, you know, double standards, which True. is basically affecting the nation. Exactly. We as a universal human, nobody, white, black, racist among us, we are created from one, you know, human. True. That is, you know, Bilal, you know, uh, Adam 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 yes, Adam we are all from one, descended. The color, all about geography. Where you are here, do you are there, it is, doesn't matter. No. What you carry in your heart, what matters a lot, the emotions the beliefs, the feelings, you know, we are very affected by, you know, the recent saying of Jerry Boris about, you know, you know, they are uh, garden and the way the others are jungle. Imagine True. this was basically a hatred. It's, True. you know, racist issues. Right. We need to counter this one. It has to be. True. Because there is no way that, you know, as a civilized person, as a civilized nation, we especially believe in the equality of humanity. True. Universalism impartialities, this kind of violation of the standard of international you know, rules, that should be countered actually. We cannot tolerate this kind of issues. Exactly. Okay. Right. And, and sir, in addition to that, obviously that was a very pertinent question by you, Haja, but how do you think that the rest of the community needs to come together to kind of make sure that, you know, that we kind of counter such uh, narratives? Because right. these narratives have been around, you know, people of Pakistan and people of Ethiopia, you know, wherever we go all over the world, wherever they are developing countries, you know, we have seen such narratives am amongst them and then against them as well. How do you think that, you know, we people need to come together as societies and communities and raise our voices to curb this menace? It is a menace. Truly, thank you very much for this one. One thing is very important. Our elites, our intellectuals need to wake up now. This is a time of transitions. We need to have our location in the globe as a civilized. We have, have got our own history True. of civilizations. So we believe in the equality of humanity. One thing, everything good for you. If you want good thing, do good to others. True. Never expect while you are disregarding people, you get a respect. That will never happen. True. So respect, you know, what happened to my country and uh, your country? We become a victim of war, you know, hybrid wars. We, they are focusing they portraying there, but they have, you know, we need to come together and work. Look, recently what is happening in my country. You know, the only government, legitimate government, it is Ethiopian government, that has monopoly of power, you know, state authority to control means. But they try to encourage, you know, the TPLF, trying to work them to create a kind of havoc which doesn't exist. True. But we need to come together. We have as a nation, we have an interest. We have to work for the interest of our country. Look, Ethiopia is doing, number one, ensuring, you know, we believe in the human rights. True. Here, everywhere, indivisible. This is human nature. So we, it has got its cultural context. True. You can't take, you know, uh, Pakistanis out of Islamic context. Exactly. You can't take out of the context of multicultural. True. The same in my country, different ethnic living. They live in, they throw political share, social share, if you want to one want to be on top of others, there is no sustainable peace. True. We need to work so that what we, as a government we say, if you want a sustainable peace, Ethiopia is projecting, working to ensure the human rights. Number one, we are giving aid is to, you know, issue of aid in Ethiopia indiscriminately, okay. given to everyone Wonderful. in need. And the government has to do that. It is a responsibility. Wow. And uh, we cannot, again, let's say, we cannot differentiate between Tigray, Amara, Afar, Somali, all. We are one. And the government has a management, and it is also autonomy. Wonderful. And it's legitimate to do that human right. 
But in the sake of human rights, you know, the Western countries, some of, you know, some countries, they try to pressurize us to, you know, the, take the <coughs> politically motivated human rights, quote unquote. This, we have seen what happened to the globe in the sake of human rights. They have gone, they destroyed the nations. True. Look, imagine what happened. You know, history tells True. what has happened. So we need to, you know, understand the real intentions. We have to come together as a country, as a Pakistan, Ethiopia, with a light mind like our country. There are people, there are states who believe in this principle. Let us equality prevail. There is no discrimination, impartiality of selecting one party to work yeah. with others. And hence there's no human right violation as well, you know, if that's what the government actually aims for. So, you know, for all of those countries which do not want other countries to progress will always be hiding behind using all of these human right activism as well. And we have seen that, Shazad, you very rightly mentioned that how human rights has been used as a political tool, a weaponized to intervene in a lot of different countries under a very different pretext. And we have seen that the how things have rolled out there. So, sir, I really wanted to ask you that your premier, uh, Abe Ahmed, he has been a recipient, or rather not recipient, he has a Nobel Peace Prize winner, True. right? Because he finished the war inside your country. So, walk us through your journey of the economic reform and how uh, Ethiopia is a power and, and a center of the power hub now it is. Look, thank you very much for asking this basic issue. What is the major problem Ethiopia we have? You know, previously, TPLF, the Tigray Liberation Front, which was, you know, they are ruling Ethiopia close to 30 years. Through controlling the military, economy, cultural supremacy. Change comes in 1960, in 2060, where people, you know, like intellectuals, come on guys, we are now in a civilized, we believe in equality, let us share equal power. That is where came the reformist, you know, within our country comes. <laughs> that reformist has ensured changes that is you know, driven within the party, True. plus again owned by the people. That is where the marriage of convenience came. The people take, you know, TPLF, enough is enough. Now let us live in peace. True. This is what we're promoting. But the TPLF, they resisted this. They wanted our supremacy. But Ethiopian people say, take your share. Let us share what we have. Manage your own affair in Tigray. And the central politics, let us share equally. They said, we can't, no. We, we will not. So our prime minister has led this change. He has did a fundamental changes addressed in Ethiopia, which was deep rooted true, that, true. the political issues. Look, people like me previously were outside the political context. He brought us on front. And let's say we own Ethiopians, belongs to all Ethiopians, true. and let us work together for 